Hello, in this video, what we're going to do is show you how to create a lap timer solution. And what I mean by lap timer, for example, I have a game, it's a racing game, and I have three laps, and I want to store how much time the user takes or the player takes to finish a lap. And then I want to do that again and again, and obviously three laps, and I want to reset the timer as well. So we're going to show you how to create that. I have a default Cocos 2DX C project created and by default you get a label that says hello world a sprite and a power button we're going to use this label here to display the current lap we're not going to do anything with the sprite so we can just leave that there and we're also going to have this button as the lap button so this is essentially going to replicate when the user finishes a lap so let's go ahead and start coding and what we need to do is create a few variables in the header file uh, and methods. I'm going to create a method called timer method float dt and the timer method is just basically going to be called every 0 0.01 second and that's basically going to increment our timer which is going to be displayed. This menu close callback is called when the menu button is pressed we'll just leave that because it's already implemented just to keep things simple. The next thing we need is a label and you might think we've already got a label and yes we have you're very right about that if that's what you were thinking but we need to access it in the menu close callback method I mean actually in the timer method so for that very reason we need to put it in the header so we can access it all over the place and what we're going to do is do float time and this is just well the time pretty simple we're going to create an array of laps i'm just going to call it free you can easily change this number we do int lap index and that just states what lap the game is on currently so we're just going to go in here actually what we're going to do is remove the sprite which was this thing right here because it's, it's just in the way in terms of code so all of this is fine the only thing I'm going to change is change this hello world to zero because well that is what we are displaying is time and now what we're going to do is actually start initializing some of our variables so down here I'm going to put time equals zero lap index equals zero and for the laps we don't really need to initialize that because that will get initialized when the timer method i mean the menu close callback is called i mean yeah called because it'd be pressed via the close item so the last thing we need to do in the init method is do this schedule schedule actually we need this one so let's get rid of this this schedule we want this one right here we do schedule underscore selector and we are going to schedule the timer method so timer method we don't need any parameters or any arguments to pass through for the interval we're going to put 0 0.01 you can change this depending on what sort of timer system you want put a semicolon and now we're ready to start coding I'm not really going to talk too much about timers there will be links in the in the description taking you to our youtube video on timers and also taking you to our cocos api guide on timers aka scheduling methods so you can check that out if you want some more detail regarding that so now let's do void hello world timer method flute dt and in here I'm just going to do time plus equals dt so what we're doing we have time set to zero and the time is the time of the current lap and I'm adding delta time which is this variable right here and delta time is the time between the previous method call so if this was 0.01 second and then it was called again at 0.02 the time between that will be 0.01 and so we're adding that onto time Next, what we're going to do is underscore underscore string asterisk time to display. Pretty self explanatory. It's basically the time we're going to display in our label. So underscore underscore string 
create wave format i've actually missed something out and let me just finish this line of code and then i'll go and do what i need to do so in here i'm going to do percent dot two f you may have seen percent f you may not have seen percent dot two f dot i mean percent f basically allows you to specify a float variable or a float and dot two f allows you to specify a float to put in the string and also casts it to two decimal places if you want more decimal places and you want to modify this go ahead and change it because it's going to be dependent on your game but most sort of timers like this have two decimal places we're happy with that we're going to put comma time and what we're also going to do is just finish off this method because there's one more line before i do the thing that i missed out so label we need this one right here set string and in here we're going to do time to display and if you do that you'll get an error because you need to get the c string so get c string not really difficult so, so the time method is all done what i missed out was this right here and the reason i need to get rid of the auto keyword is because if i have the auto keyword or the label keyword there it creates a local instance of label which is added and when i try and modify label not only has it not been initialized the position hasn't been set it hasn't even been added to the scene so therefore we need to get rid of this so everywhere we're referencing the same label so that's all good in the menu close callback we just need to get rid of this because we're not closing the application we can do an if statement if lap index is less than three this this is just how many laps we are doing again you can easily change this i'm going to do laps lap index equals time so what we did here so far we checked we made sure that the lap index is less than three because we've only got three um float variables in our array of lap times and here we actually set that particular lap time so we do equal time next thing we're going to do is lap index plus plus so we're just incrementing lap index so we go to the next lap we're going to do a log and in here what i'm going to do is lap percent i colon percent dot two f the dot two f is very similar to what we did here percent i just means integer and I'm going to put lap index and time. So what we're doing here, we're just going to log out the lap that has just been finished. So we do lap, the lap number, and then the time the user took. And then finally, all we need to do is reset time to zero. Actually, probably better if that was called timer. But again, you can call it whatever you want. And now we're actually ready to run this bad boy. So let's run this. Okie dokie, so we have our little timer running right here, and I'm going to click it at now. That's reset, and I will show you the log. Actually, I'll show you right now. It says lap 1, 6.92. If I press it again, it says 8.63. And if I were to press it again, it says 5.42. And you might think it's still running, and yeah, it is running because this method hasn't been stopped or there's no actual check inside here. But if I were to click this, not only does this not get reset, the no new laps get printed out because it checks the lap index first. So that's it in terms of doing a lap timer system. As a few extra tasks for you, uh, you could potentially put seconds at the end of this because you don't really know what this is but again depends on what you're doing you may want it formatted as well in seconds and minutes so check that out actually yeah do something so we actually format it into hours minutes and seconds with a colon separating it or a forward slash whatever you want the other thing you could do is actually have labels instead of logging out each time so you could just have like a label here saying lap one lap two lap three and the next task that i want you to do i've referenced the number or i've used the number three here and i've used the number three right here i want you to provide a solution in your project so you can easily change the number of laps without having to change both of them and a little clue hash define there are other ways but that's 
our recommended way. And the next thing, do some sort of hash define for the 0 0.01 as well. So there you go. That's a low timer solution for Cocos 2DX C++. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on sonarlearning.co.uk for slash questions.php. Also, we've got a written solution of this on sonarlearning.co.uk as a solution, which I just mentioned. I don't know why I mentioned it again. And there'll be a link in the description to that. So yeah, there'll be links in the description to literally everything that you need except for the meaning of life. So hope you have a great day and a great weekend, which is coming very soon.